We've got Janice Robel. Thank you, Janice, for coming mm -hmm. back. I appreciate it. And Diane Hischke, mm -hmm. thank you again for being with us. Um, do you deal with a lot of calls of family members seeing mom or dad for the first time during the holidays? Janice? Yeah, a lot of family that lives out of town, um, many times are, they're, they're surprised if they're, with the health condition, if their health has decompensated. A lot of times they're surprised at memory issues. They may look and notice, wow, mom's not taking her medications the right way. Oh, the laundry's piled up. She's not able to do that anymore. Um, they come in and they um, realize maybe there needs to be more help around here. Um, they start dropping hints, or maybe you need to move in with us or move into an assisted living. Um, there's a lot of things that go on during the holidays, but at the holidays are face to face with them. You let them all come to the surface, or how do you deal with them? My advice, you know, would be to, um, you know, think about it before you say anything. Too often we do, you know, jump to conclusions and make sure that you say what or whatever it is that you feel you need to say in the best way possible. You know, mm -hmm. it's so often not what we say, but the way we say it that makes uh, the difference in how it's received. Are the holidays a good time to evaluate mom and dad? Or grandma and grandpa, whoever the yeah, older no, person it's is. A, it's a really good time to evaluate. If they're afraid to say something, to say, you know, mom, you really do need some more help, you're not helping them by not saying it. Make some suggestions. Uh, maybe the neighbor can check in on you. Maybe there's meals on wheels for you. Um, a lot of times a big issue when people come in for the holiday is they realize maybe mom and dad shouldn't be driving anymore. Yes, they sh should talk to their parents about it, but it's a very touchy subject. Town, what's a senior going through at that time? They're probably a little fearful uh, that mm -hmm. uh, something is going to be pushed upon them that they don't want. You know, every senior wants to be as independent as possible for as long as possible. I think timing is so important. You don't want to start a, dis a discussion about, you know, maybe what mom or dad needs as far as help goes at the end of a, of a hectic day or in the middle of a hectic day with a lot of people around. You want to do it at the best time possible, in the best way possible. But if there's more than one sibling or more than one family member who's concerned about mom or dad, to have those family members meet first so that then um, hopefully they'll choose you know, one or two people to sit down and actually talk with mom or dad and those one or two people will know, you know, what are the highest priority things that we want to try to address with mom or dad. Should family members before the holidays maybe have a conversation? I think that's a good idea. And it can prepare the out of town family member for what to expect. You may realize that mom might need help doing X, Y, Z. Um, another thing would be if the family members can talk ahead of time, like you said, by email, um, it may be a good time to let the out-of-town family members know, I could use your help with whatever it may be. If they talk together, they can then divvy up the care. Sometimes it's overwhelming for the caregiver that's at home because mm -hmm. they're responsible for everything. So there's a lot that the in-town person is doing that they can um, yeah, let the out-of-towners know that this is where we could use some help. What are some warning signs or signals that uh, family members could look for during the holidays? Checking their medications. Make sure the medications are being taken appropriately. Um, you can check in the refrigerator and see, wow, there really isn't much food in here. Not because they couldn't necessarily afford it, but they can't find a way to get to the grocery or they can't carry the groceries in. Noticing if there are bills laying around that haven't been paid. Um, if you're able to access their checkbook, are they keeping their checkbook up the way they used to? Because, you know, those are higher level skills that someone who is experiencing uh, dementia are likely to lose before the skills of, uh, you know, being able to fix themselves breakfast. You'll have a lot of input from the neighbors and their friends. Have they been, at, been able to get to the end of the driveway to pull in their um, garbage cans? Just simple things like that. So, and the neighbor can say, you know, we've seen um, ambulances out here because many times they don't tell the kids. I've had patients who've gone to the hospital and not told their kids because they don't want their kids to worry about them. So you can really get uh, um, a lot of information from their friends and neighbors. Um, what about the house itself, the condition of the house? What should I be looking for? I probably see older adults starting to neglect themselves, um, that that is more noticeable maybe than the house being cluttered and, how, how and unclean. So. They sometimes uh, will stop getting into the shower or bathtub. Uh, you can notice 
are they still using that shower or tub or do they have clothes hanging in there or can you tell that it's not been used in a long long time um, soiled clothing you know or not changing their clothing on a daily basis or as often as they used to in the past those are also common signs that maybe there's a decline Oops.